Hello, it is Thursday, March 10th, a mild and fairly overcast day here in Seoul, the day after the presidential election. Well, I'm Alex Jensen with your daily headlines and a look at what else is going on in the news, aside from the fallout from that big presidential vote. Seven North Korean sailors and their boat are back in the north after veering across the inter-Korean western sea border due to a navigational error and mechanical glitch. The South Korean Navy seized the vessel and crew for investigation before agreeing to repatriate them in line with their wishes. Six of the seven were wearing North Korean military uniforms and they all reportedly refused to eat until they were allowed to go back to the north. A separate North Korean patrol boat also crossed the so-called Northern Limit Line while tracking the vessel, but returned as a South Korean warship fired warning shots. This was the first NLL breach by a North Korean military vessel since Seoul and Pyongyang reached a 2018 agreement to prevent accidental clashes. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un says he's seeking to develop a reconnaissance satellite to collect information about the U.S. military and its vassal forces in South Korea, Japan and the Pacific. Kim made the remark while visiting the North's space agency, according to state media. While South Korea has noted two recent suspected ballistic missile tests in the North, Pyongyang claims its launches were aimed at developing satellite technology, a task viewed by Kim as urgent. Meanwhile, the U.S. has expressed concern about the recent increase in North Korean missile testing, with Pentagon Press Secretary John Kirby noting the U.S. Indo-Pacific Command's intensification of intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance collection activities in the Yellow Sea, as well as enhanced regional ballistic missile defense force readiness. It comes as U.S. forces Korea has sent helicopters to help contain South Korean wildfires that have been raging for a week, adding to the deployment of South Korean troops and choppers. Firefighters have been battling the fires that began last Friday in Ujin before spreading to the size of over 30,000 soccer fields, which is close to the nation's largest ever wildfire size back in 2000. There have been no casualties reported, but hundreds of homes and other facilities have been damaged. And that's it for your daily headlines. You can check out that link shown below if you want to see much more Korea-related news, including the election fallout. And subscribe to Korea Now so we can share all of our latest content with you as soon as it's published.